going to start my investigation of the brakes because when I had the forks off, which are now uh, much cleaner and uh, more presentable, I don't, by a long way, not perfect. I noticed that the brakes were quite dirty and I want to recheck the pads for wear. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to have a look at the fluid level by taking this cover off with the writing the writing points that way. But if the calip if the brake pads are worn this this will be low anyway so it's really quite meaningless just to check this. And that's what I'm going to do. Now as we can see the level is incredibly low. Now it could be for two reasons like I say. Um it could be the pads have worn, so all the fluid has gone down through the pistons. Or it could be that it's low, so I'm going to top up with a little bit. It's also very dirty, uh, which is a bit of a worry. So looking at her caliper, actually the word uh, tokic is written down there. As there are two types of caliper, tokic and the other one. Um, so what I'm going to do is remove this plastic cover to have a look at the wear before I take the caliper off and give it a quick clean. I've just removed me two caliper bolts. I'm going to remove this plastic shield uh, just with this screw here. Uh, and then I'm going to remove the calipers and take out the, uh, the brake discs so I can clean the caliper. Now it's rather difficult to see, but um, you're supposed to just uh, turn this up this way, remove the spring, which is rather hard to spot, and then the pads should just be removed. It's not playing ball. Okay, so what we have here is the uh, caliper mounting bracket here and we push this towards the main caliper body here typically we can't see a fucking thing anyway if once that has happened then the pads and the spring clip should all be easy to remove yeah, the pads aren't size specific uh, these have absolutely they had it I didn't expect them to be quite this bad actually um, this spring clip, this was a bit of a devil to remove. It hooks, hooks that way up. Okay. Uh, it's all very dark. Yeah, it hooks that way, that way up. And so, gosh, it's not very easy to explain, is it? It clips each side behind these bits and it goes that way up goes in before the brake pads. Right, to actually close the uh, mounting bracket to the caliper body, I had to use a freaking G-clamp. I took the top off the, uh, the fucking reservoir so that the pressure of the extra fluid moving back wouldn't fucking break it. Unbelievable. Very fucking dirty. I don't know whether this is, I'll clean this, I don't know whether that passes, should have all those little ridges in it, because this has gone down, these have gone down to the, they haven't gone down to the metal this time, but I dare, I dare say that this has been down to the metal in the past. Okay, starting to uh, remove the mounting plate from the caliper body, which just, uh, slid out. Now we've got to uh, remove the piston by uh, extending it with the brake lever. Here is the uh, the brake piston pot which came out followed by some uh, brake fluid. So having a look inside there I mean, this brake fluid was filthy anyway, so uh, hopefully we can uh, change this up and get this to work as it should.
this caliper. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is remove this caliper by undoing uh, the banjo bolt and uh, collecting the brake fluid in this container. It's not, not going to reuse the brake fluid, dispose of it with the other oil. And this is the caliper that we've had so much trouble with. Getting ready to clean up as you can see. Trying to undo the bleed screw, the whole thing started to unscrew. Most of the rubber was shot. The brake fluid was real dirty. Here's the banjo bolt. There was this washer. The uh, bolt goes into that round thing. And that eye, I suppose. <laughs> so we put in a uh, first piston seal. Next goes the piston pot with lashings of lubricant. So uh, having placed the piston pot inside, we can now fit the next piston seal on top. Okay, we seem to have got this seal in, which was, uh, it would have been helpful if I was told just to put the piston in a little way, because actually uh, it, you will not get this on if you push this piston in all the way. It needs to go in a little way so you can get the bottom bit on first, or the top bit on the piston in first, then the bottom bit, or the bottom bit first, then the top bit around the piston. But if you push it in all the way, the seal is uh, the two rims, the one on this side and the one on the actual piston, they're too close together to get the uh, to get the seal to actually go. But the seal, it is in now, all the way around. If it pops out, I'll be surprised if it does pop out, because it's it's in pretty well flush. Anyway, so that's uh, that's done. Next. Okay, there's not a lot of uh, difference here. What I've done is uh, fitted this, this plastic um, collar there. And uh, this plastic bung goes all the way through. And I've pushed it through with this so that I didn't... And uh, anyway, didn't damage it. So that's all on. Now I've lubricated this with the brake fluid. And I've also used it with this silicone caliper grease which is uh, supposed to be suitable for this sort of thing and I've lubricated the things that were gripping the actual uh, the arms so let's give that a bit more oh yeah uh, and I'll swish that around and then I will refit these and then we'll be ready to put the brake pads in okay so what I have now is uh, holding on to one side of the caliper is a nice springy action. Now if I can't get my brake pads on now, I may as well give up. Okay, so after I put the uh, anti-rattle spring in, uh, this first pad, uh, difficult to explain how it went in, it just, uh, the, the aperture is right for it, you just squeeze this all the way in and you just press it in uh, once again the low light in this place just doesn't help uh, yeah it seems to be held in held held in there you know which is kind of disconcerting So uh, then the moving pad, which I think this large one is known as the moving pad because it uh, moves on these on these pivot pins. That is held in by the anti-rattle clip here to stop it, but it, there is some movement there. But I mean, it gets pressed up against it gets pressed up against here. This is the moving one. Sorry. <laughs> This is the moving one, and that is why we put some grease on the back edge of the disc. Okay, not on the front of the disc, obviously, but on the on the moving edge. And when the pot comes, pushes forward, 
it pushes this one and this one is pretty well held in place uh, except of course when you squeeze these together then it has a habit of dropping out but at the moment yeah it's it's held in place and that is the rebuilt shit sorry that is the rebuilt brake caliper which has just been dropped the once so uh, we'll have to keep that nice and clean don't let it happen this is the finished article ready to go on the bike and uh, the important thing to notice is there's no uh, red marks on the brake pads telling you if they're going to go down you know, there's a good uh, three or four mil there and then it's the metal but there's no like like red it says warning red line in the manual but on these Brenta pads uh, which I've just fitted there aren't any I've fitted the little plastic shield um, in the manual of course it says it's got two two screws um, but this one's got a little plastic stud instead of a second screw so it's got the screw hole the threads are in the caliper but it's a plastic stud on the little plastic cap it's a little bit of a bugger my new bleed valve works and uh, remember to put the plastic uh, the rubber safety cap on anyway I'm gonna wrap that up put it on tomorrow okay here we are with the refurb caliper new banjo bolt washers everything cleaned up new brake discs that one and all right no the the hose is now just awaiting the new master cylinder so put on a new uh, brake master cylinder with a new brake lever tidied up the uh, wing mirror the only thing is of course it's a bit hard to see the level because of the angle of the bike you can see that the uh, master cylinder is on the uh, slant there so it looks like nearly empty from that angle and uh, if you go around that angle I won't do it but it looks over full but still works nice and uh, uh, now we're just uh, replacing that cam sprocket I'm painting up the uh, engine covers so I'll probably get the clutch cover off soon enough and do that so now I'm going to remove the rear wheel on the Suzuki the first thing to do is to get in there take this split pin off and take the brake torsion bar off I'm going to do that with the bike out here I'm also going to slacken my spindle while the bikes off the stand and out here okay the, uh, the torsion bolt torsion bolt uh, was a bit of a pig so I've got to get a new nut uh, that's this was uh, the clearance here is a bit fine so I had to use a spanner maybe torque it get the torque right on the other side when I put it back now I just got to put it up on the stand and we'll get on with it I had to take the exhaust off anyway because to get it up on the stand you've got to have the exhaust out of the way which means all this is going to be a lot easier to torque up but it's a bit of a faff so I think with hindsight it'd probably be better to take off the mud guard or the chain guard or whatever I'm going to need an impact driver to undo these so uh, do that when it's on the ground and then of course the other thing is the uh, the brake the brake arm itself, which was a bit of a schoolboy error, but that should have uh, you should have taken that off first thing, as long with the torque arm bar, obviously. Right, so taking the chain off, we got the little clip, then we got a rivet, then we put the chain, then we thread this rivet half through, and clip it all together. Here is the chain, looking real manky. My cush drive and my bearings in the back wheel look really good, but everything needs a real good clean taken the uh, chain adjusters off hopefully they go up either way but they need a clean this one was on this side and that one was on the other side here's my spacers and stuff goes nut spacer 
wheel. Now this spindle, da, it hasn't got a hole in it. So you put the castle nut on, but there's no way to lock the castle nut with a split pin or R pin. So it might not even be the right freaking spindle. Don't know about that. And here's the other spacer. What I want to do is take off this, uh, this torque arm bar and give it a clean. Maybe give this rear brake a clean. Obviously got to clean all this up so I can see the little marks for chain adjustment. Might be time to, to take the chain guard off at last. It might just make putting it all back together a bit easier. And then, uh, of course, this is sort of weird pattern. It goes sort of up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down. I don't know whether it's worn like that or whether that's the way it's supposed to be. Needs a hell of a clean, though. And obviously, oh, yeah, the rear brake's got loads of uh, brake on it, so that's nice. But it could do with a good polish. This could do with a good clean.